Well, I welcome you to our blog, and uh, my name is Lee Cruz. I'm the pastor of Grace Bible Church here in Winchester, Kentucky, and we started these because we're now into our third or four, almost our fourth week of the um, the virus, and, and we're having a, I know a lot of people at home are having a, a, a tough time. We are, there are a lot of restrictions, even I'm hearing even right now, there are state restrictions about leaving or coming into different states and Kentucky I think is enforcing that also. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing these for one reason. I, I, I want to encourage uh, our members of our church to uh, just uh, just literally let this time be a great time uh, that you get closer to the Lord than you have any other time. Well this is uh, March the 31st 2020. And, and I want to share some things with you, and I hope that through these things uh, that we can, uh, I can encourage you. Uh, I, once again, I've said this every day that we've done this, but I praise God uh, for right now that he has built a hedge around us, and we have no one in our church that has come down with this virus. And so I thank him, and I praise him for that, and we hope that uh, this will be the case. Well, let me, I want to start off this, this uh, afternoon in talking to you so that some of, I know that many times uh, because of this, uh, many people are depressed, uh, they have anxieties, they have fears, they have other things. And I want to try to help you to, as Christians how we ought to dispel those things. There's some great verses of scripture that I want to share with you today, but before I do this, let's have a word of prayer. Well, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everyone that tunes in and, and listens to this, and, and I just pray, Father, that you would just help us to uh, look, at, look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith, to look to you in every area of our lives, and Lord, we trust you. Lord, I pray that you'd be with us and build a hedge around us. And Lord, give us words today that might encourage those people that are watching today. And we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Well, when we sit around and we ask, well, what can we do? Well, there's that, that, a lot of these, these things are really asked out of even in the Bible. The Bible even says this, uh, and it says this over in the, in the, uh, in the, in the, book, of, in the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms 11, and listen to what it says. If the foundations are destroyed, and everything we see around us is just blowing up and going every which way, and, and there are things around us that we just literally cannot control. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? And it's interesting, here's the answer to that, because what can we do? Well, here's the answer. The answer is, the Lord is in his holy temple, and the Lord is throne is in heaven. Man, what is he telling us? He's simply saying to this, that God is on his throne. That God today, he, know, he knew when this virus was going to come. He knew all about it, and he's not disturbed. He's not worried. He's not upset. He's not anxious. You know, uh, even when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, God didn't look at that and say, man, I didn't see that coming. No, he knew exactly what man was going to do. But he demonstrates his love towards us in that he was already preparing to send Jesus before the Bible says, before the foundations of the earth. God sees everything. He's all-knowing. He, he is everywhere. He's all-powerful. And so in all those things, he is not upset. He is just as calm as he possibly can be because he already knows what the future is going to be for us. And so I, I am so thankful that when everything around me begins to go crazy, what can I do? Well, I'll tell you what I can do. I can run to my Father. I think about Jesus as he got ready to enter Jerusalem and, and he began to say and he looked at Jerusalem and he almost wept and he began to cry out and he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how many times would I gather you like a hen gathers her chicks? And, you know, that's what God wants us to do. When we are going through things... He wants us to come to him and let him wrap his arms around us and take care of us. Well, there are some verses of scripture that I really want to share with you today, if I can, and they're found over in the they're found over in the book of Psalms 42 and also Psalms uh, 40 uh, 43. And let me read this to you, 42 and 43, and it's verses. First off, it's verses uh, five and six, and it says, "Why?" It, and, it, and it's 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 here's man talking to himself. You know, sometimes the Bible 
uh, tells us simply that we need to do some self-talk. David did that. He he encouraged himself when nobody else was there. When he when men were blaming him, David encouraged himself. But how did he do it? He encouraged himself in the Lord. In the Lord, that's the key. But listen, what how this the psalmist in writing this uh, in the book of Psalms. This is a psalm of Korah, and he says this. Why he asks the question. He's talking to himself. He says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? That's what he's asking. He said, why is this happening? He goes, go over to verse chapter 43 and look at, look at also here at verse 5. Look at what this says. It says, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you disquieted within me? He asked this again. Why do I feel this way? Do you ever get that way? You ever get to the place that you just feel, eh, you know, feel blah, blah about everything, and you really don't know why that you actually feel that way? And he's asking this question, Lord, why am I? We got all this stuff going around us, and we got all the the news is so negative anymore. And I have a hard time watching the news. And even whatever channel I think that is going to give me the, the closest to the truth I, as it can be, I have a hard time watching that because of those very things that God is looking at us and telling us many times. Those are the things. And and you know the Bible tells us over in the fourth chapter of the book of, of Philippians, one of the things, here's what it tells us to do in these times, especially in these times of, of real trouble that we are we are that we are going through. And and listen what it says in, in chapter four of Philippians verse eight. It says this. It says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. One of the reasons I think that we end up feeling bad many times is simply because we place in front of us or we listen to things we listen to things that uh, that bring us down, and and uh, you know if I stay in that stuff, if I listen to bad things all the time, if all I ever hear is negative, no wonder there's some people that are pre- depressed. They need to change their 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 whole thing of, of of what they hear, what they allow in to into their life. You know, um, one of the in the, in the book of Romans. In chapter, it's chapter six, I think it is. There, there's, uh, you know, there, there's a great thing over here that simply says this to us. It says, and 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 it uses the word obey. In chapter six, verse sixteen, it says, "Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness?" Well, it's an interesting thing about that word obey. The word obey actually means, it, it's a Greek word, and it means hupokaio, and here's what it means. It means to place yourself under. It means to simply, uh, to to what you're attentive to, what you're listening to, what you subscribe to. So that's what I would ask you. If you're listening to music all the time that is depressing and brings you down, then no wonder you feel. So I've got to change those things in my life. But he goes on, and here's what he says. He says, after he tells us in both 42 and 40, 43, he's, he asks the question, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Then he gives you the answer. He says, here's what I'm going to do. He says, hope in God. Hope in God, uh, for I shall yet praise him for help of his countenance. Uh, and then he says this also in verse 6, O oh my God, my, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon and from the hill of Mizar. Now, he says this also in 43. He says the very same. Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God. I look to God who's, who's my source. My source is not Washington, D.C. My source is not Frankfort, Kentucky. My source is not politicians. It's not the leaders of this country. Either I pray for them, and I pray that we have wise men that would give themselves over to the counsel of the Holy Spirit, that he would lay, walk not in the counsel of the, whole, uh, of, of the ungodly, and that they avail themselves of the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, that they'll know what to do. But yet in that same thing, I'm, I'm praying for them, but my source is in Jesus Christ. And so Romans ten eleven says this: Whoever believes uh, believes in 
in, in him will not be put to shame. Boy, and there's been times in my life when the Lord laid something on my heart and asked me to really launch out in faith and to do something that was sort of extraordinary, at least it was for me. And I remember thinking, what if I fall flat on my face? And, and I remember reading in Scripture where the Lord told me that if I would trust Him, that He would not let me be ashamed. And I believe that the very same thing with you and I. When, when we trust Him, He's not going to let you be embarrassed. If you go around and you telling people when they say, how are you getting through all this? You say, well, I'm just trusting the Lord. I'm walking with the Lord day by day. I'm looking to Him. I'm trusting Him. Let me tell you something. The Lord's not going to let you be ashamed. He's not going to let somebody come back and laugh. They may laugh at you, but if that that just means, uh, uh, you know, the, Jesus told us when men shall revile you and persecute you for my name's sake, rejoice and be great, for great is your reward in heaven. So we win either way. But but I don't think the Lord's going to let you be uh, embarrassed or, or uh, you know, that he's not going to honor your trust in him. I believe he'll do that. And so it tells us whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. And so David wrote this. He wrote this in Psalms 34 verse 10. He said, he said, the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. They shall not lack any any good thing. You know? Man, how, how really uh, great that is that we're not going to lack anything. You know, I believe what Philippians 4.19 says. Listen, what, you know, this is the same portion of scripture where Paul talks about that he had learned how to be abased and he had learned how to have meant much. In other words, what is Paul saying? He's saying, there's time in my life that there's been times in my life that I had all kinds of stuff. I had all kinds, of, I had plenty. Then there was times in my life that I didn't have very much. But he said, I've learned to be content in whatever circumstance I'm in. And the Bible tells us that godly contentment is great uh, is is great reward for us, and and, uh, and you know it helps us in, in our daily life walk by walking with Him. Well, how can we be content? How can we be content when we have a great deal? We I say, well, that would be easy. But when you have little, how can how is contentment in all this? How can how can as Paul said, I've learned how to how to have, be abased. I've learned how to have plenty. How to do that? Because of Philippians four nineteen. Because in that same section of Scripture, he says this. He says, My God shall supply all thy needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Well, what's his, what's his riches in glory in Christ Jesus? My Father in heaven owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He, he doesn't want for anything, you know, and he will not let us, his people want. You know, we read that verse of Scripture, I think even yesterday, I've been young and now I'm old. But I have not seen uh, the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I believe that in this time of this Cornola virus that we are not going to suffer. I believe that we're that God is going to pull us out of this and take care of us if we will just but but trust Him. Now, here's the thing I want you to see in all this. You know, as as we read these things together, uh, there, one of the things that C.S. Lewis one time said. Uh, he, he said this, he said, uh, when, when you're discouraged and you have doubts, you don't abandon everything, he says. You step back or you take ste two steps back and then you begin to survey the surroundings and then you go back to the word of God and allow the Lord to speak to you through his word. Many times when a person has sinned or, or they have uh, have given up, but the answer is to come to the Lord, confess, and then go on trusting Him and not your ability just to, just to uh, justify yourself, but trust Him. Now there's a great verse of Scripture in Psalm 66, 18 that says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Well, what does that mean? It means, does that mean I'm lost again? I don't think you're lost again. But here's what it says. It's saying this. God's saying, we're not going any farther until you take care of this. That person that you need to forgive, that person that hurt you and you're having a hard time forgiving them, that thing that's in your life, that unpaid bill, whatever it might be that God has put his finger on and he's saying to you, give me this, and you have not done that. I believe the Lord is saying to us, I'm not, we're not going any farther until what? You take care of this. This is holding back everything. 
You can't neglect that. So the Lord does that. Well, as I read these verses over in, in Psalms 42 and 43, here's what I here's what I, I come to a place that I, I understand. The first one that I read in 42 is future. Uh, you may be down now, but it, it will not last. Ephesians 6.13 says this, that you may be able to withstand all in that day. Now notice that. That you may be able to stand all that in that day. Well, what does that mean? That That's a great message to me. Because it says in the day. In other words, the time is limited. And, and it's not going to last forever. And God will bring it to pass if you'll just trust him. The, it's the word day. The Lord will not allow you to be tempted about what you're, you're not able to. You know, he's told us that there is no temptation to take in us, but which is common to man. But God, who is faithful, will with that temptation provide a way of escape. And I believe he's going to do this with this with this virus. So what does the psalmist say I'm going to do? I'm going to hope in God. That is, that is simply... Uh, is in the future. I'm going to hope in God. I'm going to believe that God's going to bring and, and that there will come a time that there will come an end to this. Then he says the second answer is the prayer is in Psalms 42 verse 5. The help uh, of his his countenance. Now notice this. There's help in his countenance. Not your countenance. It's in his. He's not worried. He's not worried whether or not things are going to work out. He's not perturbed or whatever you want, or whatever words you want to use. The Lord is in His holy hill. He's on His throne. And He's going to see us through all this. So there's an answer here that simply is in the, in, in the present tense. We need to trust Him. Ephesians 5.19 tells us this, speaking to one another and self in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. We need to be up about this. We need to go to the Lord and trust Him. If you're so down far, I've just got to ask you one simple question. If you're depressed, have you gone to the Lord? I hate to say this, I'll bet you five bucks you haven't done that. You haven't gone to Him. Go to Him and give this thing to Him and wait for the peace of God that passes all understanding that will guard your heart and soul. And God's going to come and confirm to you it's going to be okay. Just do that. And then there's a third thing. And the third answer is in the past. In the past, the psalmist writes, Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, and the hill of Mesma. What's he saying? I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember how you've answered prayer for me before. I talked to you one time about having a history with God. Coming to the place that you can look back over your life and you can see where God answered prayer. Well, if he answered prayer for you in the past, will he not answer prayer? Now, O ye of little faith, is what I hear Jesus saying. Yes, he will. So I'm just simply saying to you, trust in him with all your heart and all your soul. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Let him direct your path. And I believe he'll do that. And I believe through that whole thing, he will, he's going to bring us bring us through this. And, I, you know, I, I believe my Father in heaven is up to something. And I believe that when we finally, this thing is over with, that we're going to come out and we're going to be stronger uh, than we have ever, than we have ever, ever been uh, uh, before. And I believe that with all my heart. I want to pray for you right now. And I pray that you will spend some time alone with him, talk to him, whatever problem, whatever you're worried about. Are you worried about your finances? I know there's a lot of people that they're telling us right now that, the chances of them being laid off. Uh, some people don't know how they're going to make it. Some people, I, I talked to one lady even today that is in a that's in a senior citizen home that they're basically in their rooms and they can't even hardly come out of their rooms. And, and so I know this has got to be hard. So let me do this with you. Let me pray with you right now, okay? Well, Father, I come and, and I'm praying for those, Father, that you know about and I don't even see. But Lord, I, I lift them up to you. Those people that are stuck in a room or stuck in a home or wherever they are and they can't even get out. Lord, their, their daily routine has just been so upset and, and Lord, they don't know what to do. Some people are maybe are so alone that they have no one uh, to get them groceries and other things. And Father, we've had people in our church to call me and say, Lee, let me know if there's somebody that needs groceries or whatever that we might be able to help. And I pray that they would uh, do that, Father, that we might be able to help them. Oh, Lord, get us through this thing. I know that you will. But help us to look to you. May this be a great time, Father, 
that when we be like Peter, that when he was walking on top of the water, not when he's begin to sink. You know, the Lord could have saved him when the water was at his ankle, but he waits. He waited until he got down to his his neck before he ever cried out, "Lord, save me!" And I think that's the same way we are, Father, that we want to wait till the last minute before we really cry out to you. But oh Lord, how you care for us! And Peter even wrote this. What he write? He said I, that the Lord knows how to resist the proud but give grace to the humble. But he also said, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So, Lord, may we humble ourselves down in this time. May we look at our life and take a, a real uh, examination of where we are in you. For Lord, the day's coming very soon when Jesus is coming. Oh, I pray, my friend, that you'll realize this. Well, I know there, Peter said in the last days there would be those that would come, scoffers would come, saying, where is the promise of his coming? And they said, for things continue on as they are. Well, let me ask you something. Are they continuing on right now as they are? Have you ever seen a world pandemic like this that's gone all over the world? Have you ever seen it? Oh, I know there's been, there's been uh, great plagues and other things in certain parts of the world, but have you ever seen something that has affected the entire world? So may I say simply to you before you start saying, oh no, that's that they've been saying that for years. No, things do not continue on as they are. God is in his throne. He's getting ready to come. And I'm my hope and my prayer for every person that's listening to me today. You'll get ready. How do you get ready? You get on your knees and you cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you. I can't make it without you. And I can't make it without Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray that you be with us, guide and direct in everything we do. And we ask all this not in a weak name, but we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. God bless you. I hope that the things are going well. Those in my church or, you know, the, those people live in Winchester, if you, you know, if there's something I can be of help, just encouraging, uh, you call me. I'll be glad to talk to you. You, you, uh, you can call our church or call me whenever, and I'll be glad to talk to you over the phone, whatever we got to do. Um, the Lord loves you. Don't get down. Keep your head up. We're going to get through this. And may the Lord bless you, and, and we'll be ready maybe to talk to you tomorrow. God bless you.